So the IPL has come out with its retention policy and a lot of you have been asking me, is it good to retain players? What is a right to match card? How will teams approach this new situation? And while it's been explained fairly lucidly and with great detail on, in many places, including a very good explanation on Crickbuzz, I thought I'd explain this with a little point of view here and there. Number one, I'm overjoyed that there are five retentions. We've often argued for it. I've done a blog on that before. You have to keep the sponsors and the fan connect going. The fan connect is at the heart of all leagues around the world. You have to have five. I don't mind the fact that it's been broken up into three retentions and uh, three right to match cards. You can have a combination of those to come to five, but no more than three in each category. So if teams retain three, they get two right to match cards. If teams retain two, they get three right to match cards. But if teams retain only one, they still only get three right to match cards. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So that's one big thumbs up to the, to the IPL. Now, what's the advantage of the right to match cards? Now, to explain that further, let me just tell you what the valuations are for retentions. Now, if you only retain one player, you get a deduction of 12 and a half crores from your purse. If you retain two, you've got to pay 21 crores, but the breakup of that is 12.5 and 8.5. The most interesting is the third. You lose 33 crores from your overall budget of 80 crores, but the breakup now is 15 for player one, 11 for player two, and seven for player three. Now imagine you want to retain three, but you do not think your best player is worth 15 crores. So you say, you know what, I won't retain him, but I'll let my player go into the auction and I'll see how the bids pan out. If the bids reach 15, well, I would have, I would have had to pay 15 anyway. But suppose the bidding stops at 8.5 crores. I then get to use that player at 8.5 crores rather than 11 or 12.5 or 15 or whatever the number I would have had deducted from my purse. And so there are teams who want certain players but don't want to pay that price. They're very happy to use the right to match cards. But if you use your three retentions, and then the two right to match cards for big players, you might find that you're ending up using about 50 crores out of your 80 crores. That's still a lot of money to buy the rest of the side, but uh, the numbers are going up. And I think the fact that it's gone to 80 crores means that the players will love it. The lead players will love it. But look at it from another point of view. Will every player wants to be retained? If you're the third player retained, then 33 crores is what the team has to pay but your chance, your share is only 7 crores. Now you might say, you know what, if I go into the auction, I might actually get 10. So why should I peg my price at 7? So I won't be surprised if there's a little personal negotiation going on between teams and if players are told, listen, we want you back, we want you as a third player, then the player might say, okay, you want me as a third or the second. That, that means I've got something to think about. Now look at an RCB kind of situation. If you only want to retain Virat Kohli and AB de Villiers, Virat Kohli gets 12.5, A.B. de Villiers gets 8.5. Will A.B. de Villiers get 8.5 in the auction or more? He's got to take that call for himself. He'll probably get more. I won't be surprised. I mean, it's, it, it depends on how the, uh, how the auction modalities go. Indian players tend to be at a premium. But if there are three players, he straight away gets 11. He'll be very, very happy with that. So that's how the retention and right to match cards work. To me, the more interesting one is what happens with Chennai Super Kings and Rajasthan Royals. Now, they can pick the players who were with them before they were asked to leave in 2015, but who then went and played for Gujarat Lions or Rising Pune Super Giants. They cannot retain players from outside that pool. So if you've got players who are with you, but who are not picked by Gujarat Lions or Rising Pune Super Giants, but who've gone and played for, say, Sunrisers or for Kolkata Knight Riders, then you cannot get them back. And that makes sense because those teams now have first right on them. I suspect here, though, that this will help Chennai Super Kings far more than it will help Rajasthan Royals because there's only really three or four Rajasthan Royals players who did well enough with the other franchise. I mean, Steve Smith did, Ajinka Rahane did, James Faulkner did, he's not the player he was. But Chennai Super Kings then get the option of pulling back all their players. So I think it's been a bit hard on Rajasthan Royals, but they can turn around and say, you know what, just let it go. We were well, we were slightly hard done by two years ago, so we'll just pick our own side. So CSK and Rajasthan Royals, I can already see the excitement brewing. I can see the whistle podus going off. CSK has been an iconic team, so I, I'm very happy that they have the option of picking Mahindra Singh Dhoni. It had to happen. So that's where we are. Pretty simple rules, actually. Once the retentions are announced, then you go into the auctions. And uh, 
we will of course be there with the auctions but we've got something else for you as we go across in the build up we'll put forward our own views on what we think the players what on what the franchises will do what do you think csk will do what do you think mi will do will kkr keep anybody at all or will they only use right to match cards but what we'd like from you is to comment on this video and say right i'm a mumbai indians fan this is what i would do i'm a chennai super kings fan this is what i would do i'm a sunrisers fan this is what i would do and we want to compile all those all your feedback to try and present to people and saying this is what the public and this is what the fans want so please go ahead please tell us what you would do if you were team owners of the franchise that you follow and at the end of that we'll put the results out and we'll say this is what we think should happen so go for it we've run quite a few videos on this channel now and uh, i've been told that you quite enjoy them so if you really do why don't you like why don't we share why don't you leave a comment behind and do subscribe to the channel